After signing that three-year, $36 million contract, Sujimoto took to Twitter to announce that with that extension money, he went ahead and treated himself to a nice little Nissan R33 GTR. You love to see it. Nice little taste of Japan. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags. Here we are, 23, 13, and 1. In this video, we are just going to get a bunch of simulation done. Now, I got to apologize. My voice, I'm a little bit sick, so my voice might sound a little bit different. But we got a lot to go over. Now, the first one, Connor Wallace, back at it again with the comedic comments. He says, Chicago couldn't sign in Berg. Ha <laughs> ha. Very, very, very clever. Now, speaking of Seidenberg from the Chicago Blackhawks, he is currently a restricted free agent. Now, I knew the comments were going to say, trade for Seidenberg, trade for Seidenberg. Oh my God, if you don't trade for Seidenberg, I'm literally going to jump off a cliff. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to trade for Seidenberg. There's a few reasons why. A, because I think that Chaika is going to be a very, very good player for us. Um, and with the addition of Adam Boquist, we don't really need him. I mean, obviously it would help, but Adam Boquist right now has kind of taken over that top two spot for the future. I'm really not concerned about getting that Seidenberg guy. Farbs, he says, do not get Finn Seidenberg. Chaika will be just as good. And the big guy, the big guy from Edmonton, where is he? Gunther. I'm just going to call him Gunther. Uh, Gunther will be, will be really good as well. There's no point in trading a future top six winger and a defenseman that is ready now. Be patient. I agree. We have absolutely no rush in this franchise mode. We're going to be a playoff team this year. There's no need to trade assets. We've already worked so hard. We've drafted smart. There's no need to mortgage our future. We, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the motto I'm sticking by. Steven says no point in trading for Seidenberg anymore. You went past the December 1st deadline and he can't join the team. Stick with who you have. You love to see it, Steven. I agree with you. So unfortunately, Chicago couldn't sign in Berg, and now he's going to sit for the entire year unless they trade him, but I assume he's going to go into unrestricted free agency next year. Chicago screwed themselves with their uh, with their current cap situation, so we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now, exact same thing with Matthew Barzell from the, uh, from the New York Islanders. There's so many people saying, go get Matthew Barzell. For what? Why do we need Matthew Matthew Barzell. The answer is we don't. We don't need him at all. We don't need him at all. We have a Gucci. We have Braden Shen. We have Anthony Sorelli. We have Perfetti coming up. I don't need another center. Yes, it would be nice to have, but realistically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, we're going to do a little 10-game experiment here. Uh, we're going to put a Gucci up on the first line with Sujimoto and Hiroyuki. We are getting the Japanese boys all together. Here's a nice little photo of all three of the boys in the Japanese Summer Hockey League. There's a lot of people in the comments saying go ahead and put him up on the first line. So I'm going to see how this all Japanese line produces here. And we're going to play Chubby with Braden Shen and Michael Dow Cole. Now I want to see, there's a comment here that said uh, show Chubby's best chemistry. So his chemistry, his best locker room chemistry is actually Big Germ. That's interesting. Okay, so him and Big Germ, obviously draft buddies, drafted both in 2018. He was 6 overall and Big Germ was 20th, I think. Um, 20th, was he 20? Yeah, 20th overall. But uh, Big Germ is actually playing pretty well. He's 18, 9, and 1. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, he's redeemed himself from the past couple of years because those have just been disasters. But I'm feeling confident here. I'm feeling pretty good with our team. We're currently second in our division, a few points behind the Dallas Stars. So let me go ahead and we'll do a little 10 game experiment see how many points uh, Aguchi is going to put up on the first line I'm going to write down all three of their stats if we are winning games and if Aguchi and the boys they're killing it we're going to keep it going if we start to struggle a little bit I'm not so much worried about individual points mostly just want to solidify ourselves as a playoff team so if we play best with the captain on the first line we're going to go ahead and throw him back up there but 10 game experiment let's go I gotta say though our team is really coming together I am very impressed impressed with this squad. I'm feeling good. Let's go. Let's get some simulation done. 23, 13, and 1. Do we have any any big games coming up that we can slow sim here? I know we have a Hawks game. We'll definitely get that underway. Definitely got to slow sim the game against the Hawks. Um, maybe the Preds. Nothing else really going on in this month. 
any other slow sim games. Let's see where we get to go to anyways. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nines. So it's up to the Anaheim Ducks game. So let's get this little uh, experiment done here. See how Aguchi does on the first line. Obviously, they're familiar with each other. I'll speak in Japanese. No one can understand them. Maybe that's a benefit. You know, maybe they're flying up the wing and they speak Japanese. Could say pass, could say shoot. No one really knows. So I guess that's kind of a plus. But let's go here. Pretty much identical records between the Hawks and the Stags. A rivalry that's going to go on forever and ever and ever. No Seidenberg in the lineup, but Adam Boquist against his old squad. Let's go first period. 2-1. All right. Dougie Hamilton and Chubby. There you go. ADB scores on Big Germ. Period number two. Oh, 4-3. Okay. So Michael Dal Cole gets one and then Chubby gets another. His second of the night. Patty Kane and Hulkenberg. All right. There he is. They, uh, they even up the second period. 2-2. But we still have the one goal lead. Ten minutes left here. We're on the power play and Michael Dow goal gets his second of the night. What a trade that was. I forget what we traded for Michael Dow goal. It was him and Jesper Fast and I don't even know what the trade was but what a steal of a deal for your Saskatchewan Stags. Five to three baby. That's two and one for uh, Michael Dow goal. This is the first game that all three of those players have played together and they combined for eight points on the night. That's impressive. Three assists for Braden Shen, two and one for Michael Dalgol, and then two for Chubby. Maybe moving Braden Shen down is the move here. Interesting. Okay. We're going to go all the way up to the New York Islanders here. They are terrible. They have a record of like 9, 26, and 3. So hopefully that's going to be some easy pickings here. We're 2-0 and since making the line changes. Got a good test here up against Buffalo. 3-2 loss. That's a close one. One goal game. We got the Carolina Hurricanes. We know how good they are. Big win here, boys. Big win. Make it 3-1 and since making the line changes. Another 3-2 loss. A one goal game. See, this is where it gets scary. Okay, come on. Let's keep some wins going here. This is where it gets interesting because we can we can go one of two ways here. We can go on a heater and be like 34 and 20 or we could really slow down and be like 27 and 22. This is a very crucial point in the season for us here. This is kind of where we caught fire last year and then started to cool down after the trade deadline and then it all just went to shit. So hopefully that doesn't happen again, but let's go here up against the uh, New York Islanders. They're 10, 30, and 3. An absolutely terrible record. Not good at all. Let's go. Period. Number one against the Islanders, and it's 2-1. All right, Chubby and Sujimoto. You love to see it. Thomas Vinquist there. He scores one of the creative players on Big Germ. Now, Jacob Markstrom. All right, I forgot about this. He's in Long Island after we traded him away, even though the fans were not happy about it, but we made the trade anyways, and uh, Chubby makes his presence known on his former teammate. Period. Number two. This is a tight one. We're out shooting him like crazy, and Artem and Nisimov, of all people, Brock now. Nelson, are you kidding me? Goals less. Oh my god. Big germ. You're falling apart here. You're falling apart. Not against the Islanders. Okay. Sujimoto gets one. That's another power play. Come on. 46 shots. Oh my god. Markstrom. Markstrom is making me look dumb for trading him. 51 shots in regulation. Oh my god. We came out snoozing in the first uh, in the first five minutes of the third period and it cost us the game. Our offense though, 51 shots. That's just running into a hot goalie. I'm, I mean, a little bit of blame there is on Big Germ. You know, three goals in less than five minutes, but yeah, that sucks. Especially against the Islanders, that's got to be a team you got to beat. Come on. All right, let's go here. Three in a row. Big win against Nashville. Big win in the Big Apple. Let's go. They got a really good record. We can do it, though. We can do it. Three nothing loss. All right, 4-3 win. Okay, okay. Interesting. 27-18-1 up against the Ducks. This is going to be game at number 10. And then we're going to see where we're at. Come on. Big win there. 2-1 shootout loss. We went 4-6 and six in this last 10 games. So not super impressed. So Gucci actually went up to an 87 overall. However, he had eight points in 10 games, which isn't bad. Hiroyuki had 11 and Sujimoto had 13 in 10. So the guys produced, but we only went, what, four and six there in our last 10. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Braden Shen up to the first line. He's an assist master. Both of these guys look like they're going to score a ton of goals. Adding Aguchi to the second line just adds more scoring. Plus, he's not listed as a first liner. 
so I don't want to overplay him, and we know how good Braden Shen is, and I think, I think, I mean, look at that, we're already 56 points, so our division is so close, we cannot afford to have another one of these years, we need to just seriously win games. <laughs> We need to just cement ourselves as a playoff team. So we're going to go ahead and give ourselves the best chance to win here. How did Kovalchuk drop to a 79? Seriously? He's actually playing really, really well. He's dropped down to a 79? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. That's weird. Maybe he's unhappy playing here? Like, is his morale down or something? No, his morale's up. He's just going down, I guess. I don't know. 38 years old, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but he's producing. It's not like he's not playing good. It sucks because our division is so tight. 56 points. We're only a few away from Nashville, so let's go ahead here and cement ourselves as a playoff team. We are going into playoff mode here in January. We all know what happens if you don't get these points early on. You all know what happens. We don't need to revisit what happens. You guys all know. I don't even want to talk about it. Just win games, do your thing, get the W's, and we'll move on. Big game against Minnesota and that's a four to nothing victory big germ with vengeance or Jimmy Howard we got to give Jimmy Howard some credit here up against Dallas that's a big win 30 18 and two Ooh, up against Tampa they got a, they got a really good record Cole Perfetti and Gunther for Ryan Murray David Krejci and a second I'm I'm gonna look at this because I only want to see how they're producing in junior uh, Cole Perfetti he's an 80 overall he's 35 points in 31 games so not crazy but still a very very good Good player and Gunther down there in the uh, in the Western Hockey League got 41 and 41. So both guys are big pieces of our future. I do not want to move them for David Krejci, who's going to be out of the league maybe in two years. A second and Ryan Murray, who is good, but I mean, yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah, not a great trade in our favor. Up against Tampa, they have a really good record. That's a 5-4 overtime win. We're winning games, baby. Braden Shen back on the first line. That's four wins in a row. Can we keep it going here against Patrick Laine and the Winnipeg Jets? They got a really good record as well. Come on, come on. Oh, 3-2. Wish we would have went to overtime there, but Gunther and a second for Spurgeon. No way, no how. All right, so up against the Blues here, where are we? Are we good? Are we bad? Where are we? 64 points. We're currently out of a playoff spot. Look at our division. Oh, my God. Every team is so good in our division. I'm interested where 64 points gets you in any other uh, division around the NHL. So 64 gets you third place. 64 gets you first place in the Metro. 64 puts you number two in the Pacific. So that's just insane. Our division is so good. But, I mean, we're two points out of third place, so every game is a must-win hockey game. Now, we're going to skip over it because I want to go say what's up to my boy Agent C over there in Arizona. He's coming to Saskatchewan, but I think our record is 6-4 and four against the Blues. I know some of you guys are keeping track, but can we make it 7-4 and four against St. Louis? There you go, 4-1, baby. This is why we cannot afford to lose four or five games straight. If we do that, we're screwed. Like, you could basically kiss the playoffs goodbye. Uh, it's that. It's honestly that tight. And we all know what happened last year, but agency is in the house. I gotta take a drink of water. Hold on. My voice is, voice is killing me. I got the flu. Give me a break. All right, we're back in action, baby. First period. Agency is in the house, and it is a... Two, oh my god, I was like, those are goals? What the hell? I didn't put it to goals. Those, that was all of the events. I was like, oh my god, is it like 13-1? Connor Garland and Nick Schmaltz, Seattle Storm Bear legend. Period number two. We're down by two. Ooh, five to two. Sujimoto and Jesper Fast. Agent C gets one. Kyle Pozo and then Nick Schmaltz gets his second of the night. Talk about second of the night. Agent C gets his second of the night, and we get pumped. 8-2 to two against the Arizona Coyotes. Okay, agency. Okay, I see you. I see you. Calm down. So 32-20-2. It's not a terrible record. I mean, any other division, we're in the postseason, but with our division being so damn tight, we seriously need to uh, put together a bunch of wins here. Gunther, he's a guy who is highly sought after. I'm going to say no. I am thinking about a potential trade, though, and... I mean, we are winning games. It's not like we're going to completely shake up the entire thing. It's just looking at Kovalchuk there, 
I mean, we are winning a bunch, but looking at Kovalchuk, 79 overall, going towards the postseason with that kind of, ooh, Seidenberg again, even though we wouldn't be able to play him because it's past December 1st, and they want Cole Perfetti, no thank you. But having a guy like Ilya Kovalchuk, who's 79 overall, really isn't ideal. We're 7-3 in our last 10, so we're playing pretty good. Um, we are two points ahead of Colorado, so I mean, we're three points out of the postseason when you think about it. God, it's insane how close it is. So Dallas, Colorado, and Chicago. Those are going to be three teams we have to watch out for. Looks like the Preds and the uh, Winnipeg Jets are creeping ahead of everyone else, so it's kind of a four-team race here. Dallas, Colorado, Chicago, and Saskatchewan. But let's have a quick little uh, look through around the squad, see how the boys are doing. Uh, Sujimoto, 64 points. Hiroyuki with 64 as well, but Aguchi with 56. He's up to an 88 overall. He's he is growing and he is growing fast. What a rookie year. 56. We'll definitely have a look to see how he's uh, going up against Nika Salani from the Detroit Red Wings. But that's very, very impressive. Adam Boquist with 52. There you go. I have no worries giving you guys a first and a third. Thank you very much. Braden Shen with 51. I mean, Ilya Kovalchuk's got 47 points. So, I mean, he's producing. I'm not really too worried about that. Michael Dow Cole's got 45. Chubby's got 40. So, He's dropped down to an 84, but I'm not worried about it. He's doing good. He's going to have a 60-point campaign, um, hopefully, anyways. Uh, Justin Falk with 37, so kind of slowed down. I mean, compared to the last couple of years, he's been an absolute freak of nature. But considering that we've got some more defensemen who can score, i.e. Adam Boquist, I understand the point drop. Dougie Hamilton there with 35. Anthony Sorelli with 33. As a third-line center, he's going to finish with 45 points, which is totally cool. Uh, Jesper Fass with 22 we all know he kind of came down to earth killer there with 21 he's a good veteran presence to have there Sissons Tyler Benson Bowen Byram there with uh, three goals eight helpers plus five he's not flashy but he gets the job done and he does it correctly uh, looking at tendies here let's have a look at big germ 29 and 17 it's not bad it's not bad at all Jimmy Howard is six and five and let's have a look at the rookie race here we'll have a look one more time before we end off the video anyways but I am interested to see how close it's going to be or if Nika Solani is a freak and it's confirmed he's a freak 75 points in 58 games okay uh, it's pretty much a race for the silver medal right now uh, with Lafreniere I guess Suzuki as well and Aguchi but wow okay all right, Nika Solani, I see you. You're good at hockey. I understand. It's all good. All right, lots of points being scored here. 58 games in, and Mark Shifley has 88 points. Yes, that's right. You heard me right. 88 points. Hulkenberg's got 87. Kuhlman got 83. Patrick Line has got 45 goals in 58 games. He's going to hit 60. He's going to easily hit 60 goals. Johnny Goudreau's got 44. Oscar Gormley's got 42. So lots of goals being scored in the NHL. A ton of goals. 60 assists, though. That's just insane. So you know what? Maybe we'll get the entire year done. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's just play it by ear here. We only got a couple games left, but I'm just going to continue on with the simulation. I don't think we need to make a move. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're playing well. I'm gonna risk it going into March. Again, I'm not super pumped on the month of March. We all know how much I don't like the month of March. Up against LA, they have a god-awful record that has to be an easy two points. At home, you cannot lose to the LA Kings. And that's a 7-4 to four loss against the Kings? Are you kidding me? Come on, you cannot let that happen here. Up against Kuhleman, that's a 7-3 to three win. Okay, there you go. So you... So you lose against the Kings, who are terrible, and you beat the Habs, who are pretty damn good. Okay, Saskatchewan. All right. Nika Solani versus Aguchi here. The battle of one and two. We're keeping an all-time record in the comments. Hiroyuki scores on the first shot of the game before I can even show you guys the screenshot. This one could be a wild one. Oh my god, Mantha. Goals, goals, goals. Two goals within the first minute. So last time we met with the Wings, we smoked them. Aguchi had a goal and a helper, and Solani only had the one assist. So keep track here. Period number two. All right, 3-2. Dylan Larkin and Anthony Mantha once again, but we get three big goals. Hiroyuki, Braden Shen, and Killer. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Going into period... 
sorry, that was the first period. I think I said period number two. I don't know why I always do that. Whenever I stop the simulation during a period, I just think it's the next period. But this is period number two. Oh, my God. Goals. Oh, my God. Eight to four, ladies and gentlemen. Eight to four. Justin Falk, Michael Dalgol, Mantha with a hat trick, Kovalchuk killer, Svetch, and Sujimoto. Okay, going into the third. Now, last time we played the Wings, we won nine to four. And then the next game after that, we beat the Sharks 12 to 2. So I don't know what it is playing the Detroit Red Wings. We love to score. Hopefully, oh, there you go, Sujimoto making it 9 to 4. Are we going to win 9 to 4 back to back games? That's going to be incredible. Come on. Come on, baby. Stay 9 to 4. That's unreal. Okay, so we've outscored the Detroit Red Wings 18 to 8 in two games. That's definitely not normal. Okay. So Nika Solani had two, Mantha actually only had two, he didn't have the hat trick, that was my bad. A lot of goals, couldn't keep track of them all, but he had two helpers, so he's got three points in two games. Now, Aguchi had two points last time we played the Wings, he had, let's see here, lots of scoring spread out, everyone had points. So, it looks like he only had one helper, in nine goals he only had one helper, that's fine, that's all good. Uh, but a lot of scoring, a lot of, a lot of scoring was spread out there, Chubbs didn't get anything, you hate to see it. Uh, uh, but yeah, a lot of scoring spread out. We got four players with three or more points So uh, I guess the guys are tied up at three points each in the two games that they've played So there you go. Obviously got to keep track of that. That's something we're gonna be looking at very closely Okay, how weird is this? Remember I said we beat the Sharks 12 to 2 last time we played the Wings Well, we played the Wings last time we won 9 to 4. We won 9 to 4 this time had a day off and then the next game was the San Jose Sharks literally the exact same thing that happened last time so are we going to beat the San Jose Sharks 12 to 2 oh boy we've got ourselves a trade offer Cole Profetti for Capo Caco okay and two fifths so they give us two fifths and we got to give up a fourth Oh, baby. Okay, Capo Caco. He's 83 overall. Listed as a first liner, so his overall is probably way higher. His overall is probably like 87, 88. Um, damn, Capo Caco. Okay, all right. So, here we are. Cole Perfetti. He's, uh, he's a future top two center for us. He's been really picking up his game. He's got 52 points in 39 games. No wonder the Jets want him. A stud winger in Capo Caco who's 21 years old. His overall is probably 87. Probably. I, thought, I mean, that's my guess. He's listed as a first liner, so that's just a guess. I guess it makes sense with guys like Line A, Vasilainen, Ehlers, Kyle Connor, why they'd want to get rid of Capo Caco. However, Chubbs kind of has that um, Chubbs kind of has that spot down, unfortunately. Damn, what do we do here? So it's not great. They could really use a guy like Cole Perfetti. Now, oh man, what do we do? What do we do? All right, so a part of me wishes that Michael Dalgol wasn't so good. He's 88 overall. Um, obviously, you know, you hope he's going to be the best player he can be. But if he was like 84, I could play him with his best friend on the third line, Anthony Sorelli, because they're BFFs, if you didn't remember. Um, and then we could kind of just get Capo Caco. It's a slide in there on the... Uh, on the second line, and then we could have Capo Caco, um, we could have Capo Caco, Aguchi, or Braden Shen, whoever's gonna be for next year. Probably gonna be Braden Shen, because I think Aguchi's gonna be ready to go, but, and then it could be him and Chubby, but, oh man, that is such a difficult trade. Why do you have to throw us, why do you gotta do this, man? Why? Why, why, why? His third year into the NHL, he's struggling. He needs out of Winnipeg. It definitely makes sense. See, a part of me wants to just continue on with the video, but also a part of me really wants to get your guys' opinion on what we're going to do. So maybe I'll get these next two games done, go up to the fourth, and then we'll go, we'll go over the team here. If there's anything that makes sense, I'll have a look at it, but I just can't see us pulling the trigger on a guy like Capo Caco. 
every time that a big name player gets offered to us, or there's a big name player in free agency or a restricted free agent, I know the comments. They're going to be like, oh, you have to get him. You have to get him. But we got to think of what's best for the team here. But let's go here. Let's see if we're going to beat the Sharks 12-2 to 2 like we did last year around this time. Let's go. Period number one. One, one. All right. Dougie Hamilton and Jeff Carter. Period number two. All right. 2-1. Chubby, he gets a big goal. And we squeak a win out of this one here. Adam Boquist and Hiro Yuki. I was concerned there. I thought they came ahead there. I thought they had the go-ahead goal. But Carter gets a second. Logan Couture makes it interesting. But Big Germ stood on his head. And Adam Boquist with the G. WG. If you don't know, that stands for game winning goal. We got one game left here against the Philadelphia Flyers. We may get another trade offer. It seems like the simulation's going a little bit slower. We may have something in the works. Yep, it's something. Something's brewing, that's for sure. And it's Finn Seidenberg for Cole Perfetti. And it's Finn Seidenberg for Cole Perfetti. All right, another trade. Holy, we're getting some blockbusters, boys. Perfetti for Jones, Atkinson, and a third. We also got to give up Chica. So obviously, Seth Jones is elite, elite, elite. He's a beast. We're probably going to say no to this. Cam Atkinson is a very, very good second-line winger. I mean, Perfetti and Chica, I like these guys. I really, really do. I don't want to get rid of either of them. 35 points in 46 games. I think Chica is going to be so good for us. And obviously, we know how good Perfetti is. He's having quite a year down there with the Saginaw spirit. So I'm going to go ahead and say no, obviously, because I haven't talked to the assistant GMs. Can't do that. That's a big 6-4 win. We end off this video with three, four wins in a row. You love to see it. Where are we? Are we in a playoff spot going into March? You're damn right we are. 80 points on the year. We have a nice little cushion here from the Chicago Blackhawks and the Colorado Avalanche. So that's nice. I like that cushion. I like that cushion a lot. I'm uh, I'm feeling more confident than what I did last year. I mean, we were in second place last year, but it's basically a battle for third place and the wild card here because the stars are right on their ass. The stars are two points out of a playoff spot. We have a nice little cushion, which I like, but let's go ahead here and do a quick little wrap up before we end off the video. I was going to go all the way till the end of the year, but that Capo Caco thing kind of throws a wrench in my plans. But let's go here. Suji Mo with 75 points in 63 games. That man is earning every single yen. Ah, I see what I did there. Every single yen of his $12 million contract. How much is that in Japanese yen? How much is he making? Just for fun. This guy's making almost 1.3 billion yen per year. Guy's just balling out of control. R32, R33, R34 GTRs. You should see this guy's. You should see this guy's garage. Supra, RX7. The guy's got all the cool Japanese cars. Hiroyuki's got 73 points. Not a bad year from the kid either. He's having another great year. The way we're playing, the way we're scoring, he should get over the 82 point mark. But we'll see. Going up number three here, we got Aguchi, who's got 36 goals. What a rookie campaign. I don't think he's going to win the Calder because that uh, that friggin' Nika Solani is a machine. Adam Boquist, the best third and the best first I ever paid. Thank you very much, Chicago. A 60-point defenseman for a first and a third. You guys are idiots. Braden Shen there with 57 and 63. You'll love to see it. What a guy. Ilya Kolchuk with 53 points, 20 goals. He's down to a 78 overall. Okay. Michael Dow goals got 52. Chubby's got 20 goals. There you go. He hits the 20 goal plateau for the second time in his career. 45 points. Hopefully he has a good tail end of the year. We got 19 games left and we need everyone to be firing on all cylinders. Justin Falk and Dougie Hamilton pretty much having identical years. Anthony Sorelli playing pretty good. Jesper Fast, 24. Killer, Sissons, Tyler Benson, Bowen Byram, all the boys. Going down to goalies here. How's Big Germ doing? 32 and 18. Honestly, he's doing great. Where's all the Big Germ haters at now? Come out of hiding and face the six foot nine, 235 Big Germ. He just wants to talk. I promise. He just wants to talk. The best goalie in the league is Michael Hutchinson, apparently. Okay. Big Germ is number three in wins. That's good news. Let's see how good Nika Salani is. He's got 82 points in 63 games. Aguchi is good enough for second place. Eh, you know what? Second place ain't bad, kid. Silver medal, you can't hate on that. 
Now let's see if Mark Scheifele is still leading the way in points. No, he's not. He's one point behind of Hulkenberg. These guys are going to set some records. He's got 97 points. That's ridiculous. Uh, as for goals, Patrick Laine, he's got 52 on the year. He's looking to break the 60 mark, that's for sure. Johnny Hockey, Hulkenberg, Oscar Gormley. So lots of goals being scored in the NHL. A ton of goals. The hunt for 50 is on for Sujimoto as well. He's only seven goals away. Hopefully he can hit that 50 mark. He was one goal behind in 2019, so hopefully he can do it. But let's have a look here at our roster, and let's see... Actually, first, let's see all about Capo Caco. Let's just have a look. Not saying we're going to do anything, I just want to look. All right, so it's no wonder the Winnipeg Jets are trying to shop Capo Caco, and there's no wonder why he's so unhappy. I mean, you look at him, and he's listed as a first-liner. He's playing third-line minutes. He's 21 years old. He's already... I mean, I'm sure he's... Like 86, 87 overall, listed as a first liner. He's stuck behind Wheeler, Line, Ehlers, Vasilainen, Kyle Connor. I mean, the way things are going, they should probably shop Kyle Connor as well. Something's not right here in Winnipeg. They need to change it up. They have way too many good players. But I guess it makes sense for them to move Kapokako for a stud centerman. Now, are we prepared to move that stud centerman for Kapokako? Are we prepared to do that? What's the benefit? What's the negative? What's the positive? Let me know. Because if that's the case, then I basically have to put Dal Cole here. We basically do whatever with Kovalchuk. We maybe trade we maybe trade Kovalchuk. I mean, it doesn't really make sense for us to trade Kovalchuk. Could maybe trade Killer or Jesper Fast. Either way, one of these guys has to go. And then we play Michael Dalgol with Sorelli and Fast or Sorelli and Kovalchuk, whoever. And then obviously where Jesper Fast is, he's the placeholder for Kapokako. Now we have to sign Hiro Yuki at the end of this year. We have to sign who else? We gotta sign Chubby. So Hiroyuki is gonna be what, nine million? Chubby's probably gonna be six. We got to sign anyone else. Kovalchuk, obviously, he's going to be gone. Tyler Benson, that's going to be 10 million, at least 10 million. Um, I mean, it's 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 good and it's bad. I don't know. What do you guys think? Justin Falk, we got to re-sign as well. I mean, there's lots that we have to think about here. I don't know what to do. Also, we got to re-sign Big Germ. So, got to think about our cap situation because it looks good right now, but... Realistically, can we afford another $7 million contract on the books? Next episode's gonna be interesting. I wanna do a couple of things here. I wanna have a look at Boris Yakupov. I wanna see if he's still scoring a ton of goals and not passing the puck at all. He's got 31 goals and seven assists. Oh my God. What is with this guy? <laughs> this guy is UC Partinen on crack. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I made his shooting category really, really good. I mean, I made his passing 99 as well. So, I mean, he should... He should be able to pass the puck a little bit more, but offensive awareness, 82. Defensive awareness, 97. This guy is just the craziest player ever. Now, I want to look at the upcoming prospects, but I want to save first because I don't want there to be any sort of crashing because we've already done quite a bit of simulation. I'm already at about 50 minutes in my recording, so there's no way I'm doing this over again. Let's play it safe. I have a look at the upcoming draft picks. Obviously, we don't have a first-round pick this year because we decided to do the right thing and give Chicago a first-round pick because they really didn't want anything to do with Adam Boquist, which was ridiculous. He's a 60-point defenseman by the way. So we got Pavel Moronov here who is A+. Plus. Ooh, and he's putting up over a point per game in an A+. Plus. And he's 17 years old. So he's probably playing in the KHL putting up a point per game as a 17 year old. This guy could be franchise. We got Como here out of the QMJHL who's putting up 89 points in 48 games. We got Keegan Lynch here who is a defenseman, so he's the top rated D in the draft. Another guy from the KHL, he's... So yeah, like you can see what this guy's doing. He's putting up 9 points in 39 games in the KHL where this guy is putting up over a point per game, 47 and 43. This guy could be absolutely filthy. Looks like we have one scout left, so that guy's just doing work. Okay, so we didn't freeze. That's good news. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments. Does it make sense? What do we do? I need some help from the assistant GMs, and I will see you guys in the next video.